Hey friends, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's video is part of the Look for Less Challenge hosted every month by Yami at the Latina Next Door. And she chooses a co-host each month. And this month's co-host is Leonette from DIY Beauty on Purpose. And I will put the links to their channels in the description box below so you can check them out as well as the playlist to the July Look for Less Challenge so that you can go take a look at all of the videos for all of those DIYers who are participating this month. So what did I decide to do for this month's challenge? Well, I have a theme of mason jars. I found several decor pieces that were mason jar themed and they were just really expensive for what they were and I knew that I could take some items from Dollar Tree and make them for so much less. So let's jump in and I'll show you these three projects featuring mason jars. All three of these items are from the Wayfair website and this is the first one. It is this mason jar on a pedestal. This one's plastic and it's $24. Really? So I'm going to take one of these glass candlesticks that looks identical to the pedestal on that jar. This is from Dollar Tree, costs one dollar. And I'm going to be using a canning jar. This is just one that I had around the house, but you can pick these up at Dollar Tree, the ones that are similar to this, or even at Walmart. To glue these together, I would recommend using a glue such as E6000 and you would want to clean the top of the candlestick and the bottom of the jar real well. For demonstration purposes I'm going to be using my hot glue gun with Gorilla Glue to glue these together um, just so that it sets up quickly but this is not a permanent bond so you would definitely want to use something like E6000. And how easy is that? That's all there is to it. You could use this to put a candle in Oh, you could put candy in it, you could put all kinds of things in it. If you wanted to make it look a little bit more farmhouse, you could put some of these uh, little green lentils in the jar and then put an LED candle in here. I think this looks really cute. Or you could even put water in it and use it as a vase. So this project was $2 to make. I saved $22 off of the Wayfair price. And mine is made with glass, not plastic. This next item is what got me on the mason jar theme in the first place. It's this mason jar cutout chalkboard for $34 from Wayfair. For this I will be using one of the mason jar cutout signs from Dollar Tree. They usually carry these during the fall, but I have seen them in different seasons as well. And the Dollar Trees in my area are getting fall items now. I'm also going to be using chalkboard paint. This is from Rust-Oleum. I picked this up at Home Depot for $5. I think you can get it at any craft store and also at Walmart. I will also be using this Rust-Oleum metallic aluminum color spray paint as well as some Waverly chalk paint in the color Elephant. This is just a dark gray paint. You could use an acrylic paint and a lighter gray acrylic paint as well. I'm going to start by removing the hanger on this. I won't be using this so I'm just going to cut it off. On this sign, the Hello Fall is a raised glitter design, and so I am going to take some uh, coarse sandpaper and I'm going to sand that off. I want to get this as flat and smooth as possible and get all that glitter off. So once I have this nice and smooth, then I am going to tape off the top of the sign where the the lid is and I really probably didn't have to do this I realized after I had done it that I probably could have just painted over the whole thing. 
So I'm going to go in with my chalkboard paint and I'm going to spray two light even coats on this. And you can probably already see that this did not work sanding off those letters. The paint did not stick in that area. So I'm going to be using this side of the sign for my next project. And I am going to use the back of the sign for the chalkboard because it is smoother. Now when I painted this side, it soaked up the paint more. And so I had to do three or four coats of the paint on this. I also noticed the finish was a little rough, so I'm going to take some 240 grit sandpaper. This is real fine sandpaper and just lightly go over the surface just to smooth it out. And this worked really well and it was easy to do. And then I just went back and sprayed one more coat of the chalkboard paint over the top. And once that is dry, I'm going to tape off where the lid part would be. And I'm going to uh, also cover the rest of it with some newspaper just to protect it so that all that is showing is the lid. Then I'm going to spray paint that using that metallic aluminum spray paint. Now I want to make the lid look galvanized, so I'm going to use the elephant colored Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to use kind of a fluffy old brush and I'm just going to pounce this dark gray paint all over on top of that metallic aluminum paint and then I will also go in with a little bit of the lighter gray paint and I'm just building layers here, trying to give it some depth and make it look like it's galvanized metal. And so I just kind of alternate back and forth between the elephant colored chalk paint or the, the dark gray and the light gray. And then I also decided to add a little bit of the black acrylic paint in here as well, just to give it a little bit more depth. So before I finish up the mason jar, I want to show you the third project. It is this mason jar door wall decor piece. $50. That's insane. I'm going to make one on the reverse side of this chalkboard and it's only going to cost a couple of dollars. Since the paint didn't work very well on the side where I removed those glitter letters, I decided that this would be perfect for that other project because I think the chalk paint is going to cover this up just fine. So I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color pool and this is a light blue because I want this to look kind of like one of those uh, mason jars that's the tinted light blue. You could use a green color or uh, just any color that you like. While my first coat of paint is drying, I'm going to take some of that light gray acrylic paint that I used before and a sponge brush and I am going to paint over that burlap that is on the sign as the lid. And then I'm going to go back and add my second coat of blue paint on the jar. If you are new to my channel, I would love to have you stick around for more DIY projects, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now I'm going to use the same technique using that dark gray paint on the lid on this side as well and make this look like galvanized metal. And I did add some more of the light gray as well as a little bit of the black on this one as well. Now I'm going to take a little bit larger brush and I'm going to get a little bit of black paint on it and do a little bit of dry brushing across the jar part of the sign. And I got a little too much there up at the top so I'm going to just take another brush and paint a little bit of the blue paint over the top of that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of ivory chalk paint. You can use this a white acrylic paint or a, an off-white and a smaller round brush 
and I'm going to paint some lines along the outside edge of the jar and these are going to be some broken lines they're not just a solid line all the way around and this is just to give it a little bit of highlight and and kind of bring out the shape of the jar it kind of makes it look like there's a reflection on the jar so now I want to add my monogram and I just printed out uh, the letter J for our last name uh, on Microsoft Word in a font that I like and I am going to take a pencil and on the back side I'm going to color over that design just making sure that I'm getting the edges of it where I'm going to be tracing this is one way to do it if you don't have any tracing paper. You could also use your Cricut, just cut out a vinyl letter um, to put on this, but um, this is an easy, inexpensive way to do it. And when I printed this out, I centered it on the page, and it just so happened that the paper and the mason jar sign are the exact same width, so that made it kind of easy to uh, place the letter on the sign and try to get it in the center. And now I'm just going to trace around the outside edge of the letter. And this will transfer my pattern onto the sign and then I'll be able to see that to paint my letter on. And a couple of tips here. I would suggest choosing a font that is not too thin or too fancy because then those will be harder to paint and also use a flat paintbrush like I'm using here. It really helps to get nice edges on your lettering. Once the letter was dry, I turned my sign over and I'm going to use a chalk marker. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree. And I am going to, uh, again, put those lines around the outside edge of the jar and it shows up better on the chalkboard but I decided to use the marker just because I found they don't come off as easily as just chalk and I thought it would be easier than painting them on so that's why I used it. Now I'm going to take some jute twine and I picked this big roll up at Walmart but you can get it at Dollar Tree as well and I am going to wrap this around the top about four times and I'm going to leave a long end so that I have something to tie a bow with but then I'm just going to wrap it around four times cut it off and tie the bow. For a hanger I'm going to be using some wire and this is some I had on hand. You can also pick up these packages of wire at Dollar Tree and it comes with the black and kind of a reddish orange and silver. I'm going to be using some black wire and I will just poke one end through one of the holes that are already there at the top that the hanger was in to begin with and then I'll take that bend it up and twist it about an inch and a half or so up the, the edge of the wire and then I'll put the other end of the wire through the other hole and twist that as well. I decided that the chalkboard side needed a little bit of an embellishment as well so I'm going to wrap the jute twine around my hand about four times and then I will cut another little piece of twine just to tie around the center to make a little bit of a bow. And I add a little bit of hot glue in there just to help secure that because I cut the ends of that not pretty short so just to keep it from coming apart and then I'm going to glue that onto the twine up by the lid. And that's it my chalkboard sign is finished and I really like how it turned out it was so inexpensive to make. It's easy to write on and it's also easy to erase. I think this would be so cute to have in your kitchen to write your menu on for the day um, or just to put a cute little saying like this one on. 
So if I had purchased all three of these projects from Wayfair, it would have cost me $108. But I made them for about $10 plus a few different colors of paint that I already had. If I had to buy those paints, I could have made these all three for less than $20 as compared to $108. That's pretty amazing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you are new here and coming over from one of the other Look for Less Challenge videos, I would love to have you stick around and become part of the Love and Life's Journey family. So hit that subscribe button and don't forget to set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed day.